The global gaming industry is expected to be worth more than 101 billion US dollar this year, but much like the tech sector, it's ripe for disruption. So here, later this week at the Gamescom conference, the big players in the market are coming together and they will present the games to their fans. But until this is happening, we have the GDC, the Games Developer Conference, now taking place. And it's right these guys who are actually deciding what's going to be happen next in the industry. It's not long since the latest console or major game release provoked a welcome like this. For years, events like the global GDC were the territory of the hardcore gaming establishment, players like EA and Blizzard. But times are changing. The emergence of low-cost gaming systems, organizers say, are forcing the gaming business into somewhat of a respawn. The biggest trend at the Game Developers Conference Europe is the rise of social, mobile, cloud gaming. It's just an ever-changing market and it's growing exponentially. Devices like the iPad and low-cost systems like Amazon's Fire TV combine versatility with the power of cloud infrastructure to make incredible cheap, compelling and mobile games. A trend that's revolutionizing gaming development. I think with social you know, and, and cloud gaming and so on, the, the biggest change for sure, for everyone, is going from you know, building a box product that you ship and you're done with it to running games as a service. The players expect that the games is being updated continuously and they get new experience all the time. And that business is booming. The surge in mobile is leading the market in terms of new growth, a trend that's attracting even major traditional production houses to get in the game. So we believe that at some point in the future that your cell phone is going to become your game console. Today's game developer now needs to think about a mobile form factor, very small games, still with a high end visual because that's the expectation that today's gamers have, uh, but you know, delivered in bite-sized chunks. But the economics of these new games are very different. When you're talking about mobile titles, the initial game is often free. So how you monetize that is the discussion being led by new entrant gaming distributors like Facebook and Google at the conference. You're not going to a store spending $60 on a game and then bringing it home and playing it. You're, you're downloading a game for free, you're spending a dollar on in-game purchases. Some of these developers who are making free-to-play games are bringing in millions of dollars a day. So it's completely skewed the, uh, the traditional business models. Of course, none of this means the traditional gaming business is going down without a fight. Hardware and software makers like Microsoft, Sony and Cyberith are all still working on taking advantage of their platform's unique features to create a more immersive, high-end experience with virtual reality and responsive environments. Mobile gaming is, just, is something you do just in between or something like that. Just simple, easy games. What we are doing is the virtualizer, and this is a locomotion device for virtual reality. You get a very immersive feeling and you are really part of the game. Meaning no one's quite ready to call game over on the traditional gaming market just yet. Your traditional consoles are still evolving along with uh, the emerging markets, they also have to adapt. So they're making a really huge strides in hardware innovation. Now, as I said at the end of that story, traditional console companies are trying to diversify and also improve their experience by playing to their unique features. But you do have to look at the likes of Microsoft, who initially bundled their Kinect device into the Xbox One at launch. They've since removed it to try to increase sales. A lot of people are asking the question now whether the latest cycle of traditional consoles may actually be the last.